hello. Uh, today we're speaking to uh, Matthias Wolhebs, uh, who is a managing owner in Wolhebs Group in Germany, uh, for our Young Managers uh, series interview. Uh, so welcome, Matt and Matthias. Thank you very much for taking time and talking to us. Uh, could you please start with giving me a short brief about your background of your professional career, please? Sure. Thank you very much for um, yeah, inviting me to this interview. It's very cool. First time I'm doing it, so um, please excuse if this is not 100% uh, professional, but I'll try my best. Um, yeah, some background on my professional career. I um, did study business, actually a, a quite a classical um, course uh, at the University of Mannheim in Germany. Um, enjoyed my, my time abroad, um, studied uh, half a year in Spain and a half year in Poland, um, which already kind of shaped my interest in foreign cultures and um, countries. And then afterwards I joined Hay Group, which, is, um, which has been an American company um, these days and worked for them one and a half years as a trainee in Frankfurt. Um, that was very important because I wanted to, you know, not start my career being a boss or owner of a business um, or partner of a business. I wanted to um, experience uh, being just, um, yeah, entry level employee, which was very, very important for um, leading people afterwards. And then my father called me in um, a bit earlier than I expected and that I, want, that I wanted to um, our family business because uh, it was, he felt like it was time for a change. And that was um, almost uh, seven years ago now that um, this happened and that I joined Fall Herbs in Indian. Yeah. So uh, who did, uh, what, what was your position when you joined the company? It was, um, Already pretty pretty soon, it was um, being the sales director, uh, res being responsible for marketing and sales. Um, yeah, which was which was um, clearly my role. I mean, I'm not a technician at all. Um, I, I don't. I also don't feel too safe in that area. I'm not too much into details. Um, I'm rather my brain is probably rather made um, to take a look at the full picture. Um, and that's what I love to do also. So it was pretty clear that I won't end in technology. And as we are not a super big business, it was clear that um, my field, um, my play field will be sales and marketing, which I also studied. Um, that's where, that's what I focused on during my studies. Okay, great. So your current role is a managing owner. So what are your responsibilities within the company at the moment? Still mainly um, in marketing and sales. Um, that's still my field. Obviously, I'm, uh, I am experienced now. When I started, I wasn't experienced at all. Um, yeah, which was quite a um, intense time to um, take a deep dive into printing and then also starting from scratch, uh, pretty much from scratch um, in, in practical life with marketing and sales. Um, but that's, that's what I love to do till today. Um, obviously, as being the the owner and the CEO, also I'm also um, responsible for technology and printing and the the whole um, operational part. But I do have somebody, um, which is Michael, who's looking after that. So Michael and myself have um, spread it up quite fairly. He's um, leading production while I'm looking for the marketing and sales team. My brother is also um, still in business. He's looking for shared services, um, like group purchasing or co corporate purchasing and um, HR and some other shared services in the country, uh, in the company. That's how we spread it up. Okay, and Wolheim Vol Struck is a family run business. Is that correct? It is, um, yeah, as you can see from the name, uh, <laughs> which you pronounce fairly good. Um, <laughs> It's, it's a family business. It's, it's also our family name. Um, re, we're a real proper family business. So um, it has been my father, my brother and myself working in the company. My uncle is also still working in the company, being responsible for um, quality assurance. And um, my father just retired like um, end of 2019. He's still supporting, you know, he's, he's the guy who's um, 
probably one of the um, world's expert in uh, label finishing. So he will exactly tell you what's possible and whatnot. And we still make use of that knowledge. So it's actually still a family, totally family run company. And it's always been 100% uh, in the hands of the family. It still is, and it will be for many years. Okay, great. How big is the company right now? How many employees do you have? And uh, what, what are your main focuses in terms of markets uh, you supply and the geographies? It's, um, we're uh, in, in full-time equivalents, uh, close to 110 people. Um, around 40% um, being uh, white collar workers, around 60% uh, production team. Um, fairly high number of, of uh, women in the team, which is very cool because we are producing um, super high quality products. Um, so a women's eye is often better than, than the men's one. And um, yeah, coming there, we are coming to the markets. We are serving wine, uh, sparkling wine, spirits, companies. Um, or we, we actually like to call them brand, o brand owners because not all of them are producing the products. They are, they are mainly marketing the products. Um, and then that's, that's um, taking these is around 90% of our business. And then we do also work together with some food suppliers like um, honey, uh, honey manufacturers or um, brand owners of marmalade, some um, juice and water manufacturers, mainly the guy who are really focusing on brands and quality. That's, that's where we have our focus on. So we are not made for 10 million labels for, um, I don't know, sausages, proper mm -hmm. German sausages. You'll not find a follow-ups label on there. But if, if, you've ha if you have, uh, um, if you drink a nice um, premium wine in the evening, it's, it's um, pretty likely that you'll have a follow-ups label on there. Great. If it's from Germany, Switzerland, and or South Africa, that's our main market. Great. Um, what do you think uh, sets uh, Vol Volhebsdruck as a um, sort of um, uh, apart from other converters available on the market? I know you personally are quite strong. You've got quite strong views about corporate culture and change. Could you could you expand on this for me a little bit? We we indeed do focus um, from the from the start from where, from when I entered Volhebsd. Um, I, when I, when I was uh, 26, uh, sh uh, sorry, 28, um, I strongly focused on changing the company's culture into a modern and young one. Um, the, the time I entered, I was the youngest employee besides some um, trainees that we, we had in, in the company. So we were a fairly experienced company, let's, let's put it like that. We did um, produce great products. Um, we were successful in the market, the clients liked the products that they saw, um, yet we were not, um, I didn't perceive us as being innovative and as having a, a fully open culture, you know, uh, which is open to failures and discussing about the future. And that's pretty much what we changed quite, quite strongly and quite quickly. Um, uh, after the, let's say, new leadership team overtook, which was not only myself, it was all, also my brother that I, that I um, uh, brought up and some other guys who joined the companies then in the last seven years. And um, yeah, we try to, we try to be um, uh, as open as possible with each other, um, having a very modern failure culture. Um, obviously, we do ha have all the stuff in place like, um, soccer and ping pong and we'll even have a playstation soon where uh, we can play uh, fifa against each other which is which the people make use of but the main thing is um is being on eye level totally and um and that 100 percent openness with each other not only you know when it's about problems between people also when um addressing projects for clients um it's not about hierarchy it's always about the best idea to, to solve the problem. Okay, fantastic. And I think, I think that's, that's, that's what we're pretty good in and that leads to, to the result where we probably are able to set apart from, from some um, other businesses, from some competitors who are doing an extremely good job and I think we are all good in printing good quality. 
I think what we, with that, you know, culture of being 100% open and, and listening to people, uh, to ourselves, to, to colleagues, but also to clients and suppliers, I think we are really um, what, what modernly is uh, described as customer -cent centric. We do really, really um, try to step into the shoes of our uh, customers and really try to find out what their challenge is and try to um, help them also understand their challenges. You know, it's not always about having just a label printed. Maybe the, the problem is that the product is not sold as a, at a high price point or um, they are just paying too much for the label compared to the price point where they are. That's what we try to understand and, and figure out a solution together with them. Fantastic. Um, uh, could you tell me, uh, where do you see the future of the company? Obviously having a, a quite important role in, a, in, a, in the business. So how do you see your main focus in the future years? For us as a business? For, for, your, for the company, yes. Um, so we, we um, are actually not changing our positioning in the, in the next years. We are rather strengthening where we are now. Um, and, and that is um, brand owners who really understand that the brand is important for their uh, business results and that the label is important for their brand. So that's actually an understanding that we need um, in order to work successfully with, with our clients. And we want to find more brand owners out there in the, in the sectors that um, we just spoke about in, in the other question and um, look that we can help them make their products uh, more successful because we believe that's, um, that's what, we, what we can do. And um, one thing that we will definitely focus on is innovation. Um, we think that there's a lot of um, innovation to bring into label printing. Um, and innovation in label printing can lift up brands and, and make them more visible in the shelves. So for instance, we, uh, th about three years ago, we developed a concept that we called craft label, where we bring natural ingredients like soil or ash or uh, slate from, from the vineyards into, uh, into the or onto the label through um, screen printed technology, through a high build varnish. Um, stuff like that, you know, where you bring together different worlds and different uh, ways of thought uh, into a new concept is something that really, really drives me personally. Mm -hmm. So talking about innovation, I recently uh, uh, saw your video about label in motion on, on YouTube channel. How, can you tell me how this idea came about and, and uh, how did you get involved with it? So augmented reality um, is a technology that we've been working with actually for years. Um, we have, with our pre-press department, built up labels and the bottles um, in 3D in augmented reality so that the customer could put it into his shelf, for instance, or onto his desk and um, take a look at the digital prototype before it's, it's being printed with very high quality and a visualization of the print finishings. Uh, like foil and, and embossings and so on. So we were quite experienced in, in augmented reality itself. Um, and then at the time, it was probably two years ago when we saw um, the South, South African um, wine farm, 19 Crimes, releasing their first augmented reality wine label, we were shocked because we said it makes so much sense to do that. And we were um, really uh, angry with ourselves because we didn't, think of that um, yeah but obviously obviously um, it's um, it's been a very very clever move from them um, and we um, we're a printing company so it's not in our main focus I must say um, but once we saw it we said um, we must bring that to our clients and believe it or not if if it would have been another printing company who did it or let's say a design agency uh, or, or or brand or marketing agency we would not have taken that and copied it because in in the end that's what we did you know we took that technology and that idea and and uh, maybe not copied but we tailored it to the needs that our clients in our perspective have um, we are, we were looking for um, experts who are experienced in augmented reality, like um, more experienced that we, than we were at that stage. And we found that um, 
partner agency and we just started you know we just said we want to do augmented reality labels we did have the creativity in the company to um, develop creative pro projects um, because at that time we were also um, creating um, wine label designs and spirits label designs um, we've been doing that decades ago my father has already established that in the, in the 80s um, so we did have, you know, um, a lot of experience in creative processes and um, and design work. And again, we brought these different worlds together. Um, we we um, took the time to figure it out and we just did it. Great. And um, yeah, it was cool because um, the very first project was um, our own project um, with uh, a light bulb that was exploding after a while. And we had um, fairly quickly a South African client, um, KWV, quite a big brand owner from the wine uh, sector, and also a German wine client who said, okay, let's do it. We, we want to invest into that. We want to be the first on market. And yeah, we, we did the projects to get together with them. And I think, it, it, you know, every project, it's not that you suddenly have a million more people buying your product. Um, but it's about understanding that new technology and it's about uh, understanding uh, the digital digital space and that uh, and their augmented reality labels really help. Mm, fantastic. Um, so a part of uh, heading the company, you also a very active member of Finet's Young Professionals Network. Could you tell me a little bit more about this? How, how did you get involved and, and why, first of all? Good question. Eh? Um, if I remember, I um, from the start I was interested in building uh, an, a let's say international uh, network in the printing area. Um, we we were quite well um, linked in the German label and and printing industry but not in Europe and, and I'm, I'm just, you know, seeking for perspectives. I, I love different perspectives and that's why I just decided for myself, I want to, I want to see what's, what's happening there and was um, booking that first um, YPN conference in Budapest, if I remember correctly. And um, from the, you know, from the first minute, it was such an open atmosphere and such um, such open, sympathetic, and and just nice people that I met there. Um, and during that conference, I think it was pretty, uh, at the end, um, when I made close friendships already, one of my um, closest friends in the YPN, um, Chris Jones, uh, asked me if I would be interested to join the team and to, um, to, to become a member of the board. And I, I didn't you know, think about it for a second. I said, "Yes, um, this is such a this is such a great thing. I'll I'll definitely join, and and let's do something together." Um, and that's that's how it started. Um, and that you know that total openness and the um, it's it, it was so rewarding um, to be part of that group. That was um, fascinating, very fascinating and catching for me. Mm -hmm. So, what is your current role in YPN? Well. Um, from from um, an organizational point of view, I'm responsible for the events, mm -hmm. which we really want to push in the future. Um, we didn't have our own event in 2019. And before coronavirus hit us all, we were um, planning our event for um, late 2020, which still is not um, totally off, off the list. But um, yeah, we have to obviously think about moving into 2021. Um, and I'll then be taking care that um, these events have interesting content and will lead to interesting results for the industry. I think that's a bit what we failed in the past um, at YPN to um, because we've not we feel like we've not re been re really been relevant. It's been a great group um, and and everybody learned a lot from each other, but we didn't, you know push something into the industry. And I think that's, that's um, pretty much our main task as a young group. Um, so our, our challenge or our, our task in the YPN as a group of board members currently is really to reshape the YPN, YPN and make it um, a really relevant um, part of the label industry in Europe. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Um, uh, I see YPN as a very useful uh, tool, really, a networking tool for young people. Um, as th there is lots of conversations uh, within the industry about how to attract young talent to, to the labeling industry. Have you got any programs in Volhelpstruck uh, uh, to attract young people to your company? We don't really have programs. We, um, we, I think what, what really helps us to find young employees is that we are communicating quite openly um, to the market via um, Instagram and Facebook mainly. Um, that works especially in our area here around Endingen where we are based. Um, a lot of people noticed that there suddenly is a company who tries to make a difference and, to, and, and that tries to be modern. Um, we were six years or so when we started with social media. We were uh, quite, quite an early mover um, from the corporate side um, uh, in, 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 let's say in our segment and in the size of the business. Um, so that helped a lot to attract people and um, gave us probably quite an awareness. And then once the people um, apply and we get into conversations with them and we invite them to the company and we show them around, they experience our culture, they see our gym that we have in the company and the communal places that we have where everybody can, can have a cup of coffee together or read an article together, um, the creative rooms that we've, that we've established. I think once the people see all that, especially the young folks, they um, really see it's not only you know something that they post on social media, um, which is only the trigger. Um, it's something that they really live. Some this is really a dynamic company who um, who lives what they what they tell us um, uh, on their website, and I think that's why it works. It's it's I think it's very authentic that we're doing. But it's not as I said, it's not a program. It's not it's not super mm -hmm. fancy or a campaign. No, it's just what we usually do, and we just just try to to explain that to the people and try to you know talk about it. Okay, great. Um, um, just going to the end of our conversation, I would like to ask um, a little more relaxed questions now. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you tell me what you do? What do you do in your private time? What are your hobbies? Um, what do you do in your spare time if you have any? Um, you know, I, I, I um, actually don't perceive my time at Vollhubs as work time. It's actually part, it's, it's actually kind of a hobby. Um, so my fiance really has to remember when, I, when I'm at home that um, it's actually time for something different now. But I'm, I'm usually, I'm, I'm, I'm working a lot on weekends and also during holidays. I don't mind, you know, it's, it's, it's my passion. Um, but then when I really do put my smartphone away um, and when I have some, some free time, I'm probably living a very yeah, normal life of a 35 years old guy, um, traveling, um, um, uh, spending time with my family, with my um, nephews, with a lot of friends. Um, I, I love to cook. So, um, yeah. I also try to really then, um, if I really don't work, I try to just just live a normal life. I, you know, wouldn't then like I, I don't I don't need the most ex to, to drink the most expensive wines just because we we um, print the labels for it. I then really try to also set a counterpoint and just have a beer at the Drysam River in Freiburg and enjoy the easy life okay, and have a kebab and have a kebab with it. <laughs> Great. And, and, and lastly, if you wouldn't be involved with the uh, printing industry, what would be your, your dream job? My dream job indeed would be to have a diving school in Thailand and be a dive master. That's pretty much my dream. Um, yeah, just easy going, hanging around at the beach, having Thai food all day, go diving six or seven days a week that's that's probably the life i would i would live um not very realistic and i would probably miss my family family and my friends very much so uh, i'd probably not do it but in another universe and another time and space i would be the dive master in thailand fantastic um well 
thank you very much, Matthias, uh, for putting some time on the side for us. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, uh, it was a pleasure speaking to you, uh, and I hope I'll meet you soon on one of the industry events. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for myself as well. Um, nice having had uh, the chat with you, and keep well. Stay positive.